Hello, I'm Entrilitim, and welcome to Let's Play, or Let's Try, Galactic Civilizations 3. So, Gal Civ 2 is one of my all-time favourite games, really. So, certainly, like, up there in my top maybe three favourite Forex games. Forex being, uh, space games, real-time, no, oh, turn-based strategy where you explore, expand, exploit, and then you exterminate. Although in Galsiv's case, you can win through other means other than exterminating. You can diplomacy people, you can like influence them and get people to buy your blue jeans and listen to your pop music. Um, their science and something about ascension via looking at relics or something. Um, Galsiv, I love it. And Galsiv 3, I haven't actually had a chance to play more than a couple of hours of so far. So, I thought what a great way than to cover it on the channel because I, A, want to play it, and uh, B, really want to show you guys this, because so far it looks pretty decent. It looks like a pretty reasonable update to a game that I really, really loved. So, we're going to go new game. Now, one thing I must say I love about this is the fact that they've included me as a playable race. Um, I'm really great of them. I, I love, you know, Stardock very kindly put me... I'm kidding. Uh, you can create custom races. Uh, if that was the case, you know, I wouldn't be against it. But yeah, it's a very uh, self-aggrandizing picture. Uh, people watching my Twitter feed will know that. It was from when I got my uh, 100k plaque the other week. I just had to use that picture somewhere. Also, it has me with a sword. By the way, that wasn't my fault. That People were like, what's a sword? And I was like, fine. Um, anyway, uh, what I want to do is just want to tweak this. So, the character the race creator, you can customize a few things. One thing I do want to change is I don't have space there. There we go. Space entered. Also, I want to change the background. Why is my short name... Oh, because my cursor's in there. I was like, there's a giant eye there. Um, right. Where is it? It's background. Customized background. Picture. What about that? Let me try that again. Better. Better. I'm feeling that. What else is there? Some, like, code. Hmm... Maybe that one? There's a nice variety, I must admit. There's a nice variety of background pictures you can pick. Uh, I actually added one myself, just to check that it works. Although that shouldn't be in the background. I don't know why it's being picked up. Tempting, but I think I'll stick with the defaults. I think I'll stick with this one here, the corridor. Nicely frames me. Um, right. So, you can enter, you know, foreground picture, background picture, leader portrait. Uh, you can mess around with your race. I've also included the race logo, so the Elysian Empire will indeed be in space. The Elysian Space Vessel is our call sign. Uh, star System. You don't get to edit the name of your star system, you just get to edit the uh, the type. You can edit the name of your planet, though. Uh, I've gone for the Arb System, which is a randomized home system for minor races. It contains a class 16 worlds. So we've got an amazing world to start off with. But uh, it'll be a little bit randomized, which is nice. Uh, we start off on, I think it's Elysium. Yep, there we go. And then you get to customize your race. You've got a certain number of points. Now, you can take negative things to give you more points. And then you can spend those points on positive things. So what we've got so far is clever. So we've got like a super clever, plus 20% research, which is tasty. We've got uh, dense, which doesn't mean the opposite of clever. It means that you can get more mass to your ships. So you have larger ships. There's more stuff on them. I kind of like that because it will lead to quantity sh uh, quality ships. Because you're putting like lots of effort into making a really big, awesome ship rather than lots of small ones. I like quality. Uh, accuracy. We've gone, you know, accuracy. I was like, you know, if I'm going to have big ships with, like, lots of awesomeness, maybe they should hit the target, and that kind of helps. And fast, because I want to be able to get around places. Uh, now, I could take, like, some negatives, but for now, especially since I don't know the game, like, the ins and outs yet, I've kind of decided that, you know what, I'll, I'll lay off the negatives, because they might really change the way the game plays, and I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to play it. So, for the moment, I've got some mild positives. Um, cleverness is, of course, level two, so that's uh, a bit more than just a mild positive, but... In general, there aren't any, like, definitely going all-out war. There's a bit of everything in there. Um, actually, there's not. There's just war and research. There isn't anything influence-based. But there's no negatives, so I can play most playstyles. This isn't a, uh, uh, a one-trick pony by any means. And then you get racial abilities, and you pick two of these. I picked Ancient, which gives us access to research from pre precursor artifacts, which I think you also have to use to... Uh, unlock one of the victory conditions, which is like you ascend or something from Precursor artifacts, something like that. And then there's Picture Audit, which is uh, immune to large empire approval penalty. So I was like, you know, if we're going to have a large empire and kill everybody, then maybe we should actually have, like, no penalty for that. You can also get other stuff like, um, 
Where is it? Synthetic. You know, the good old-fashioned synthetic disables food and growth. Uh, instead, you get an assembly project to create citizens. Good old-fashioned stuff like that. Um, appearance and style. I have got these ships, but I think you might change this up. I'll go with the Terran. That's not Terran. Oh, wait, that's theme. Hello, Terran ships. That's... We have the Terran interface. Yeah, the Terran interface seems reasonable. And you can have, you know, different colours from a set list. It's a shame you can't pick them, but you can have them from a set list, which is fine. I might pick some that stand out a little bit better. The one I had before was a little bit dark, and I did find in a test game that you couldn't really see it. Inverted Terran might work. I'm going to try and change the material. You can change the materials, which is nice. There we go. We'll go with Relic Painted. That's kind of nice. Uh, this one's a little bit too bright. Dim that a little bit. Not gold. Not brushed metal. Painted metal works. Sure. Terran Inverted. Right, we'll use that. And you can then set the personality. So you can actually use these races as... AI enemies. You can fight, you know, whatever enemy you make up. So, the Conservative Party. Uh, and you can basically then go and pummel them. That gives me a great idea for a game. Uh, but, basically, for now, I've just gone, you know, uh, I, I'm pragmatic. I think I'm, I'd be more like a pragmatic race. So, you know, maybe not, not just pure benevolent. You know, I don't want to be a goody-goody, but I'll be pragmatic. Um, and, you know, we'll be called an expansionist, opportunistic, scientific... That seem reasonable, so that'll be how people describe us. And then it'll be like, this is how the AO will prioritize your military and your empire and your expanding and your fortification and your growth and your tech. So I've kind of been able to list them. So it's really cool that you get to sort of decide how the, uh, uh, how would you call it, the behavior, the AI behavior works. So that's all good. 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 Excellent. Let's save the brace. Yep, that's good. Right, uh, next. Right, let's set it up. I'm going to go for small, tight clusters just to begin with, just so that we, uh... Ooh, that said, it's pretty tempting to go for a larger map. Yeah, okay, medium. Medium, like, tight clusters, right. Medium, tight clusters. We will have occasional, occasional, abundant, uncommon. Yep, that seems all good. Victory conditions. All of them on. Turn limit. Defeat your foes before the... I don't really want to turn the mat. Turn the turn it off. Beginner. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna regret this, but I'm gonna put it on normal. I'm so gonna hate that. Choose your neighbors. Right. Let's uh have a look around. I'm gonna ooh, can I kind of randomize these. I haven't actually tried randomizing them so far. I just accepted the presets. Okay, for now, I'm going to just add five, four? How, how big a map did we go for? We went from medium. So I'm probably going to go for five in that case. Can I just keep adding? Yeah, I can have as many as I want on a map. I didn't know that. This is going to be interesting. I'm probably going to go red it. But uh, we've got five enemies on the medium map. That probably sounds about right. I think it's three on the smaller map. And we're going to give this a start. I'm going to suck so badly at this game. Don't worry. I've only managed to play a few hours so far, and I must say, the first few hours didn't go as well. I might be play a few hours this off-camera at the same time and just try and get better as we go along. So, eventually our map will be spawned. Tick-tock. Here we go. An ancient species of unknown history and makeup. No one knows who they are, where they came from. But it's a big galaxy, there's always going to be someone who fell through the cracks. Awesome. Alright, so this is where we started. Lovely little, you know, yellow sun. It's not really a little sun, is it? Uh, a dead world. Lovely world there. Durantium can be used to increase kinetics and armor systems and to increase durability of ships. I was okay, so that's a special resource. I forgot you can't use WASD with this game. Because it active it's the that with D. Hmm, interesting. Whoever's up here is gonna have a sucky time. Right. So we're down in that corner. Okay. Uh ooh. Wow. That suddenly got very Let's look at that. Options. Um Interface. 
Edge scroll speed. Yeah, I've had problems with this before. You should be down about there. No? Oh, it's not edge scroll speed, is it? Camera scroll speed. There we go. Better. Better. I don't know why that keeps resetting itself, but there we go. All right, so this is our planet. One, two, three. What are you? Floodplains. Ideal for building farms, okay? Three there. Capital here. What are you? Snuggler colony. These furry creatures are the dream pet for children in the galaxy. Influence growth plus 5%, one per player. What's this? Techapod hive. These small creatures can be trained to do menial tasks on starships. Maintenance minus 5%. Okay. Plus to manufacturing, plus to influence. What's this? Provides almost three energy for manufacturing or research. Well, since that's a manufacturing bonus and that's a manufacturing there, I'll probably use the manufacturing adjacency. What's this? I did it region that's so few beautiful that makes living here makes people happy. Um, okay, I don't know what I have to build there to get the bonus there. Right. So in the game you have things that give adjacency bonuses. Um, so laboratories, for instance, I could build here, and our capital will give it an adjacency bonus. Capital always gives you an adjacency bonus, I think, to anything next to it. There we go. Uh, bonus to adjacency, pretty much everything. Um, if we put a influence building there, it would get a plus one from here, and it would get a plus two from there. So that's a pretty good place for an influence building. I'm going to build some research buildings to start off with. I'm going to build them there, there, and there. Get a nice little three going on. So, yes, let's build one here. And I also want to buy that. Just get it done, like, really, really quickly. Uh, if we also govern. Right, you can see here that we have our money. This is money. Uh, we have our production. And we have our research. And then you can, like, determine what you want to put your emphasis on. So for now, I want to put all my emphasis onto research. So we're going to be putting, like, research, like, 29 straight out. Zero wealth, zero manufacturing. But I want to, like, you know, at the beginning, you start off with a load of money. I want to just sprint on, get on the... Uh, Get on the bandwagon for research. I've got money. The idea of the game gives you a lot of money to start off with, so you're allowed to research things and sort of tailor your empire rather than just crawling up from nowhere. Um, oh, what are you? You're my survey ship. So go and survey over here. You're a scout ship. Go over here. Because you can see there's like little... I think these are suns. Right, and you're my colony ship. You should probably go. Go over here. There is a star over here. Right. With that underway, let's pick a technology. Hello there. Hello, my little bot friend. How are you? Um, I'm going to go with Universal Translator. Two turns. And that allowed me to communicate with other races. And I kind of want to do that by the time I meet them. So that I don't end up pissing them off. Because I'm like... Um... Where is the Kino? Gagayan. Where is the cinema going? Yeah, that is exactly why you don't say that. Uh, anyway, so we've done that. What else have we got to do? Build a ship. I think we should sprint build another colony ship. So I think we'll actually buy a colony ship. Yeah, that's a great idea. Buy a colony ship. We're buying a research lab. We've got all our stuff in research. We'll take two turns. We've got everything moving. There's nothing else to do. Let's end our turn. Ooh, load ship. I'm going to load it with... Sure, let's go get three three people on board. <laughs> Literally three people. The entire civilization of the Elysian Empire consists of seven people currently. Uh, no, uh, it's like three billion, I guess? Wow, that's a lot of people in a spaceship. I really hope they've got some good aircon. What if somebody farts? There we go. Now I've put like three billion, like in half of my population almost, in one ship. Talk about all your eggs in one basket. Just saying, probably not the best plan. A lush world. Well, there we go. That looks like a great place to put a colony ship. So we're going to send a colony ship down there. And grab that. Continue on in this direction. Mm, nothing there. Continue on. Mm, hopefully be able to cut out a decent area around us. So this is our like influence border, by the way. It's not a, like a solid border; people can cross it, but it's the like the influence area you have. 
and you can win and you can turn over planets and like outposts and stuff by having them inside your influence, they'll eventually turn to you. Uh, right. What am I meant to be doing? I'm meant to be building another thing. I think I'm going to build another research lab, get the adjacency bonus going. And I think I will buy it immediately. Now the question is, do we buy another colony ship? It's pretty tempting. Currently we're only going to have three planets. If I buy another colony ship, we can go to four. How much would a colony ship cost to buy? Ooh, what about a constructor? I'm going to build one, not buy it. And I'm going to switch my governance to... There. How long would it take to build like that? Like, ages. 64 turns! There we go. Let's try leaving it like that. That'll be like, what, 48? Yeah, 39. That's fine. I will change it later on, but for now, that'll have to do. Um, I think we're good to go. Let's end our turn. Okay, research. Intense study of the fragments of alien text and speech has allowed us to create a universal translator that will let us communicate with any new races we come across. I don't know why he speaks like that. He's a robot. Maybe, well, maybe we've perfected like some decent roboty speech. Choose new tech. I'm uh, going for next. What should we go for next? Um, Zeno industrialization. That gives us like Zeno factory. And give us Zeno farm there. Governance. Nah. Warfare. I don't want to go for warfare immediately. Inter uh, manufacturing. Oh, that's only like gives us a larger hull. Here we go. Here we go. Interstellar travel gives us a prototype hyperdrive. More move? Yes, more move sounds like a great idea, especially when we're trying to expand our borders. Yeah, yeah, more move. Interstellar travel, that sounds great. Um, what was I meant to be doing over here? Starting to explore. I like to use manually rather than leaving them at the end of the turn, because it means I can react to anything I find. Hmm, nothing there. Nothing there either. Shame! Oh well. Uh, idle colony. Right, we're not building anything here. Basic factory. On this tile. Uh, free energy for manufacturing and research. And we get a adjacency bonus here, plus two to manufacturing. Build. How much would it cost to buy? 450. Yeah, I'll go for it, because that allows me to build other stuff faster in future. Idle ship. Okay, yeah. Uh, we'll move up towards this star over here. Can we not move again this turn? Okay. We'll move to there next turn and just scout the air around there, look for planets. Um, you? Research relic. Build a Xeno archaeology module on any by Starbase to study this precursor relic and unlock its mysteries. And I think there's more Durantium? Yeah. And a class 11 lush world, a plant with amazing potential. Chapness. Okay, uh, I think it's time we try and colonize that planet. So abandon our search for this uh, solar system down here. Just head straight up towards it. Because if we can get this planet, then it allows us to try and connect around here. We can then maybe set up a, uh, a research base to have a look at this relic. We can get the Durantium here. Seems like a good place to really try and uh, start, our, start our first uh, little bit of interstellar -y, jumpy, spacey... What's it called? You get the constructor and you make a, a base. An outpost. An outpost. That, I think it's called an outpost. Yeah. Seems like a good idea. Uh, idle colony. They're only taking seven turns around 11 now because they've got a, uh, a manufactory down. Another factory here would be a great idea because that would uh, give us plus two from there and give us plus one adjacency from that one. So I think another one would be a really good idea. And then we build a consulate here, and we get the influence. Yeah. Basic factory. Build that. Just a plain old build, not a buy. Plain old build. Yeah. That seems like a great idea. We're going to end today's episode here.
The Elysian Empire will prevail. Uh, it will defeat all the enemies, although we haven't seen an enemy yet. Or anyone we even think might be a future enemy. But for now, we, uh, we're about to, not quite, colonize our first colony. And then hopefully a second one, provided no one gets to, what are you called? Chapness 2. Provided no one gets to Chapness 2 first, we'll be good. But until then, I've been Andrew I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please remember to like. And especially since it's the beginning of a new series, it really does help out a lot. And if you're not subscribed and you want to see more, obviously, considering subscribing would definitely help in that regard. Until next time, though, stay shiny.